What's up, this is AJBYGO. Today I'm doing a deck profile on my Weather Painter build that I took to Nationals, and I won this beautiful mat with. Uh, let's just get right into it. First, we are starting with the monster lineup. We have, uh, three Weather Painter Snow. Uh, obviously the starter. If you just normal summon it, you get to place a canvas. Uh, it makes the deck tick. Then the three Thunder. He can send any continuous spell and trap, which you're running a lot of, to place any canvas. It's also, it sends his cost, so it's at, you're out for skill drain. Uh, Cloud is your link enabler. Uh, when a face-up weather card leaves the field, you can target up to two canvases in your grave and place them back on the field. Uh, and then the last one is one Aurora. She's not great to draw, but if you summon her off of rainbowed canvas, uh, it'll protect all your weather spell traps. Uh, and then for, to finish out the monsters, three dimension shifter because you don't care all these banish for cost and three ash blossom and joyous spring because it is the most generic hand trap and can hit the most amount of things on to the spells we have the new the weather forecast out of uh dimension force this card is uh, a custom card come to life it places a canvas uh, from your deck on activation it allows you an extra normal summon uh, when you activate it again on field, and you can link with your spells and traps going into your link three. Uh, then we have two snowy canvas and one rainy canvas. Snowy canvas is your searcher, rainy canvas can bounce your opponent's spells and traps. Uh, against back row decks, you can just keep bouncing everything. Uh, three prosperity, because why not run duality for six in a deck full of you needing like one specific card, but you know, it can be any, like, Weather Painter Monster or any canvas. Uh, three Mystic Mine, because it's degenerate, and you can play under it really well, because all your shit vanishes for cost. So you can establish, like, a snowy canvas in the snow. Uh, snow comes back during the standby phase, you just keep banish it during the standby phase, so they never really have a great opportunity to go down to zero monsters, or go down to one monster to get rid of the mine. And you can search everything until you either win the game, because uh, you search everything in your deck, or your opponent's going to deck out. So try to close out the game. Uh, terraforming. And set rotation. Uh, you're running three Mystic Mine, three Forecasts, so you want to be running them. Uh, onto the traps, three Skill Drain. Uh, this deck is insane and can play three Skill Drain because they all banish for cost via the effects given to them by their canvases. So you can play under skill drain and have all your monsters essentially while your opponent does not get to activate any monsters. And then also three Grave of the Supreme Organism. It works the same as skill drain for a lot of these decks. Uh, Despia, Sword Soul, they can't really make any boss monsters and play under them. Uh, and you can still activate your link effects, which in some cases and some matchups means that Grave is better than skill drain. Hey guys, Editor Austin here. Just want to take a minute to talk about Grave of the Super Ancient Organism. Uh, as the format kind of moves away from Despia Sword Soul, you might want to find yourself choosing something else to put in this slot, like maybe Shadow Imprisoning Mirror for the Tier Element matchup, or Ghost Ogre for the Splite matchup. Maybe you can move, uh, I'm going to spoil something here, but uh, D Barrier in from the side and move them to the main deck. Uh, as you are just trying to go first and stun your opponent for a turn, so then by turn three, you can get out your Link 3 monster. So yeah, whatever you see fit to put here, Macrocosmos, uh, DD Crow, it is, it's really your choice of how you want to shape it for the format. Uh, we have the one Metaverse, once again because you're playing so many field spells, two Infinite and Permanence, uh, had to cut some cards somewhere, I'm at 41 cards in the main. Uh, and then we have our two canvases left, the Rainbowed and the Thunder. Rainbowed, if your opponent controls a monster, you can summon one with a uh, different name from deck, and Thunder turns everything into a battle trap, and it's really annoying. Alright, so that's the main deck. Then on to the extra, we have uh, three Weather Painter Rainbow. This is your boss Link monster. Uh, it turns everything it points to into Omni Negates, as well as working kind of like Thunder King Ryo, when your opponent would special summon a monster, you can send this card to the graveyard to negate the summon. Uh, it's re its just a really insane card. 90% of games where I summon ra Rainbow, 
uh, you win. Like it's a, it, it's a, it's unfair. Moonbow at three is the also the new one. It summons a banished one on summon, and if it's destroyed, floats into rainbow. But uh, I really wouldn't. I don't make it very much. It turns everything it points to into banishes though, so it, it, it has its applications. Then we have a uh, two phoenix, two unicorn. If you want me to be real, uh, these are mostly used as prosperity targets, but you know they have generic application. Then we have an unchained abomination because sometimes that's this is really easy to make because with your a field spell you can turbo out a link three and if the omni negates aren't good enough for some reason you can just use them to go into unchained abomination and also boral sword i did pick up some games with boral sword uh psychic and end punisher if you attack into boral sword with it is very fucking funny uh and then lastly zen mains downward magician and zeus that's a zeus package uh they're all level three other than aurora so sometimes this will come up it, it's you know Zeus is still one of the most powerful equalizers in the game and lastly the side deck we have three token collector sword souls still meta it obviously won Nats I tried to resolve this twice this weekend and both times it got dropleted I was so sad and one Gamsiel with thundery canvas Gamsiel turns into the kaiju lock. You just are bouncing the kaiju back to your hand every turn. It's super oppressive, uh, really annoying. And you know, it outs stuff like Adding Nister, which was playing at the top tables. Uh, you have to have towers out, in my opinion. They're too prevalent today to not at least run one thing in the side to go up against it. And then our spell and trap removal, we have Feather Duster, two Twin Twisters, and a Cosmic Cyclone. Uh, I obviously was very ready for Flu. This match does not have a great matchup against Flunderies. So I also am running one Zombie World because I'm running uh, Metaverse, Terraforming, and Set Rotation. Zombie World was able to be put into the deck so I could get it out onto the field. Uh, instant win against <laughs> Flunder. Then also three evenly matched. Going second, it's still, in my opinion, one of the best cards ever printed. You can use it against back row decks. I uh, I was playing against Stun during one of the mats I during the mat that I won. And he I just made him go first and I went second because I'm like he's not gonna like lock me out of playing the game entirely. Uh, so I evenly matched him and because he was so low on resources I I just outpaced him. Then uh and also this deck normal summons. What was Pacacephalo gonna do to me? Uh and then 3D Barrier, because this is an auto-win against uh, branded matchups, Sword Soul matchups, uh, Punk matchups, you just call Synchro. There's so much that this, this card is pretty unfair in the long run. Uh, and, I mean, that's really it. it. It's very consistent. It bricks a little, but... Overall, it will take games off of everyone. I've been running wild at my locals with this thing. And uh, that's the deck profile. Uh, have a good day. You never see it coming.